It's so grateful to see you all. I can see you with my spiritual eye. We thank you all for being here, and we're just honored uh, to worship with you this morning. Uh, you could have logged in with anyone, anywhere, but we're so thankful that you decided to do it with us today. Uh, before I get into my message, there are a couple of things I want to remind you of, and I know in many areas today, and, and I believe also next Sunday, is considered souls to the pole. And I do want to encourage everyone to go out and vote. Uh, but oftentimes we hear a lot of appeals about our going out to vote and who to vote for, but not a whole lot on how to vote. And because of that, I want to encourage you, if you don't, if you haven't already, to uh, get out your trusty devices and go out and follow me on Twitter at Herb Redrick. I've got a message out there right now that gives you four things you should look for in how to vote. Not who to vote for, but how to vote. I'll, I'll just give you one of them. Uh, we need to look at character over charisma or charm. Uh, a lot of things can blow past you if you just look at a person's charisma or charm and not their character. And character goes a long way. Do they have the moral, moral fortitude to do what's right regardless of what others may say to them or about them? And so do that. Just go ahead on and follow me out there on Twitter. Now, as we continue to celebrate our 138 years, uh, we're doing not only things here on campus, but also in the community. This week alone, alone. You can drive up here on Wednesday morning starting at 8 o'clock and we will give you a free, listen to me carefully, a free COVID-19 test. You don't need to pre-register, you just get here. Uh, you get here between 8 and 2 o'clock and we'll make certain that you get a test and we'll get you an answer within 72 hours. And then men, uh, we love our men but we want to make certain that you love yourself and we're going to have free, listen to me again, free prostate cancer screenings and I believe that's on October the 27th. You can find all of that by just downloading our app and tap the app and you can get all of that great information there. Now we want to thank uh, Minister Roundtree on last week who did an awesome job uh, in uh, sharing with us our being rooted in scripture and he left us some seeds that I want to just share with you uh, what those are. Uh, the first one uh, that he gave to us was Jesus was and is the true vine and everything else, listen to this, is false. If you're not connected to the true vine, you're not connected. And then the second thing that he gave us was that God the gardener, listen to this, the righteous judge will do the separating. Oftentimes we feel it's our job to try to separate who belongs and who doesn't. That's not our responsibility. We're to leave that to God. And then the third thing that he shared with us is pain is not, uh, how is it? How did they say? Pain is not the evidence of sin, it is the tool of God to produce fruit. Uh, you know, some, some cutting, uh, how many of you got a garden? But most, most of y'all don't know anything about that, don't, don't even do that. But when you cut a plant, you see some uh, fluid oozing out of it, and God uses that uh, for that plant to be able to develop, to be, become more fruitful. And then the fourth thing that he shared with you was that the vine allows nut nutrients to flow from the nutrients to the fruit bearing branches. And, and then lastly, his, his bottom line, I just really love this bottom line that he gave on last week. And that was, um, let's see, let's see, what was his bottom line? Let me see, I had to pull it out here, I got it. If I can't call it to my memory, let's see here. Sometimes you have to do that. Okay, um, nope, I forgot it. All right, well, it'll come back to me. When it does, I'll, I'll, I'll give that to you. I thought I had written it down. All right, so now I want to talk to you today about being rooted uh, in Scripture. Um, if, if, if I were to say many of us today are duped by the American dream. Now, in the Declaration of Independence, it tells us that uh, it proclaims that God has... Uh, declared that we have the unalienable right to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, the problem with that is that we have a flawed understanding of what happiness is and a flawed way of pursuing it. 
And so I want to help us because especially during the climate in which we find ourselves, uh, we're becoming under unnecessary pressure, let me say it this way, under unnecessary pressure because of COVID. We believe we're losing a lot uh, because of this uh, pandemic and because of the protests and because of the presidential election. Uh, but I wanna give us the secret to success and a happy life. How many want a successful life? How many of you want a happy life? Tap the glass, tap the glass, okay. All right, so, so I, I wanna share that with you. And we're gonna find that in the book of Psalm. And we're going to look at the first psalm, uh, Psalm 1, and I just want to hang out today with you with the first three verses there. And if you would, I'll be coming from the NIV. If you don't have your trusted devices or, or your Bibles, I want to, again, encourage you to pull down the app. If you do so, you can go out there on our app out there. And when you pull it down, uh, you can, let me see here, it'll tell you right there. Uh, you can pull down on our app there. And then uh, what you do is you hit down at the bottom, you hit worship, and then you'll come right up to, you can have today's date there, and it'll give you the scriptures and everything that you need there. And so, uh, Psalm 1, and I'll come from the NIV. Hear the word of the Lord. Bless is the one, listen to this carefully, bless is the one who does not walk in the, who does not walk in the step, listen to this, who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that the sinner takes or sits in the company of mockers, but who delights in the law of the Lord and, medita and who, who meditates on his law day and night. This is the part I love, verse number three. That person, listen what it says, that person is like a tree planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither and whatever they do prospers. Now, 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 we have to understand here, this book here of Psalm, this very first Psalm is sort of the foundation of the entire book. Well, this very first word out the gate is the word bless. Now this word bless does not necessarily have the full meaning of something God does to us, but something we receive uh, because of our behavior. Uh, the closest English word we have to it is the word happy, but happy in the English had woefully, falls woefully short of the real meaning and understanding of, of, of what the word bless means in scripture because in the English Bible if you uh, you can fact check me on this uh, you look at Marion Webster I believe it says that your happiness is the chance of favor uh, meaning that it is going to happen by happenstance uh, that there's nothing you can really do uh, to guarantee it uh, it's just a series of putting the odds in your favor uh, but biblical happiness uh, the word bless here uh, has a stronger and better and more definite meaning for those of us who experience it. It, this word here means more than just good feelings. It, it means that you're going to have uh, provisions. It means you're going to have protection. It means that you're going to have calmness. It means that you're going to have contentment. It means that you're going to have satisfaction. Now watch this in every circumstance and situation. See, 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 this, this American dream is fleeting. Uh, it comes and it goes. And, and you know, that's why you have to watch the stock market. And when it goes up, you're up. When it goes down, you're down. But when you have biblical happiness and you have biblical joys, it doesn't matter what's happening on Wall Street. It just matters what's happening on your street. Amen. Notice here now, he says, blessed is the one. This, this, some of your Bibles, if you, depending on what translation, it may say man, uh, but it really means pe person. Happy or blessed is the person who does not. Now, he's going to give us three characteristics or behaviors that a blessed person doesn't participate in. Uh, the first one he has here, notice he says here that blessed is the one who does not, listen to this now, who does not what? Walk in step with the wicked. 
I want to hang out here right now. This word walk uh, means follow a path. Uh, and this word in step means take instructions or follows instructions. He's talking about who's in your head. Who are you listening to? Uh, who, who are you following on Twitter? Who are you uh, liking on Facebook? Uh, who are you uh, dealing with in Snapchat? Who are you, what articles are you listening to on your, on, on your web pages? And, and what do you have popping up on your screen? And, and what texts are you following? And, and he's talking about who's in your head. He's talking about the instructions that each of us follow. We're all following someone's instructions. We're all listening to someone one or to a group or to some institution that's directing how you believe and how you behave. And we all, let me just talk plain, your belief impacts your behavior. Your belief impacts your behavior. And so he's talking about here now, uh, first off, who's in your head. And uh, some, some writers don't believe that what he's talking about in these three characteristics are progressive, uh, but they, I believe that they can work independently as well as progressively. Uh, and, and so he's saying here now that, the, that this lifestyle uh, that one has, this happiness that one has, he's saying here, how can I say this? Happiness, listen to this carefully. Happiness is not a reward, but a result of a lifestyle. Listen to me carefully. Happiness is not a reward, but a result of a lifestyle. And what do I mean by that? Uh, a lot of times when we think about God blessing us, we think about ourselves just receiving something regardless of our behavior. Can I talk plain? Many of us are not blessable. All right? Uh, and so so what, what the writer is showing us here is that you have to be blessable uh, in order to be blessed. And, and that starts with a lifestyle. And so certain things that you are wanting to have happen to you will not happen to you because you're not blessable. All right. Now, now this word "bless." This, I, I could stay with this word for 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 a long time here, but in in the Hebrew here, this word is actually in the plural, which means happinesses. Now, that's not an English word. I, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, but that's a Herb Redrick word. Happinesses. That means more than one happiness. Uh, it is, so that means that you're that you have happiness in different areas of your life. See, many of us are just looking for happiness in one area. Uh, we think if I get this, I will be happy. Or if I get that, I will be happy. But true biblical happiness means happiness, means blessings in every area of your life. That's why I said that the uh, English word or definition falls woefully short of describing what happiness looks like in, in the biblical context. As again, I said that's joy, that's peace, uh, that's provisions, that's protection, that's contentment that is satisfaction and and without anything lacking boy 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 so 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 now he's saying that that first thing that you do if you're that kind of person you're not going to have what kind of people in your head notice what he says now that you do not walk in step all right with the wicked now a wicked person is one who disregards who says there is no God uh, they're not even thinking about their being a God uh, they're not even thinking about what God says they're not even looking at God's word you can't tell them anything about God that they are wicked wicked are the opposite of those who are righteous who are following God's word who's following God's way who's following God's will and he's saying now that you don't let wicked people in your head he said that's first if you want to be blessable all right he said the blessable does not all right this is something you do not do now notice the second thing he says we do not do he says that you do not s stand in the way that sinners take this word stand in the way again he's talking about a path this word way means on a road so first you let that wicked person get in your head and then they're going to start leading you in a certain direction now notice now he changed from the wicked to the sinner uh, again now this person here is a person who knows what God says but tells you you don't really have to do that to be happy yeah I, I know that 
How many of you all, I can raise my hand because I used to think this, well, that Bible, that's an old book. It's outdated. That was from my daddy and my grandmama and my granddaddy and, and all of those old folks. You know, that book is out, outdated. It's not for me. How many of you other than I thought that? How many? Come on, just be honest with me. Yeah, but see, here's, here's see, then, but one day I read that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, which means that the Bible is never outdated. It is never out of print. Uh, it's a word that's a living word. It's going to always be relevant regardless of the times. In fact, when I read it now, it's like reading out of a today's paper. It's so relevant and so current. And oftentimes we run away from that, especially when we were younger. Uh, but the minute I start seeing that God's word uh, is food for my soul, and I'm going to get there in just a minute, then I understood that I need to have it day in and day out. But he's saying here now that those who are blessable, those who are following God's word, those individuals do not. Stand in the way that sinners take, meaning you don't go in that direction. You don't listen to the wicked person who would then say, follow the sinful behavior going against what God says do. Regardless of what the culture says, regardless of what the law says, the law of the land. Remember, we're to render unto Caesar what is Caesar, but unto God what is God. And so next now, notice what happens now. If you, if you let the wicked get in your head, then you're going to follow the sinner's way. But notice what happens next. He says, or sit in the seat or in the company of mockers. Now, you have made a definite progression from listening to Following, now you're sitting in the company of mockers, meaning you have made this your behavior. This has become your place. Now, a mocker is the one who laughs at you for doing what God says. They, they, they laugh at God's word. They, they mock God's word. Uh, but the Bible said God will not be mocked. And, and so these are individuals who talk about how you spend your time, how you spend your talent, how you spend your treasure. You must be foolish still going to church, still watching that online. You must be crazy for doing all of those things. Where is your God now? He's the same place he was yesterday and the day before and the same place he'll be today and and tomorrow. So, so what's the first seed of life uh, that I want to give you here? Because here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that you can't have ungodly people as friends. I'm not saying that. In fact, I'm saying the opposite. You can be a friend to the ungodly, just don't partner with them. You see, in fact, you should have some ungodly friends. Well, let me just make it plain. If you don't have some ungodly friends, you may be the ungodly one. <laughs> it may be you they trying to help instead of you trying to help them. Uh, so, so you need to look at your friend's circle. You need to look at your friend's circle. He's saying here now that we're not to become like them. But we should be light in a dark world, uh, that they should see our good works and they should glorify our Father who is in heaven. And, and so he's saying here now that this is what you shouldn't do. Now, now notice what he says that will happen. He's saying now that those who are, are, are not doing this, here's what you should be doing. Look at the second verse there. He says, but who does what? Meditate. No, delights in the law of the Lord. Now, this word delight uh, is, is, is a funny, peculiar word. It means to pursue something. Um, let me just make it plain, brothers. Um, when, when, when you were dating, and hopefully while you're still married, you're still pursuing your wife. Uh, but while you were dating, you, you upped your game. Come on now, let, can I talk plain? You, you had your A game, right? Uh, uh, you, you showed your best side. You, you were there. You were present. You, you, you doted on her every word. You listened to everything she said. She had your attention 24-7, 360. You said, oh, baby, I just can't get enough of you. You know, you talked long hours on the phone, and, and you were just, and you couldn't wait to get up the next morning. Am I talking to anybody other than me? 
This is what he means by this word delight. It's something that you enjoy doing, something that you pursue doing, something that you have a desire to do, uh, that is not a burden to do. It, it, and so he's saying now that you delight in the law of the Lord. Now this word law here, he's not just talking about our following some rules and regulations and, and keeping some, some, uh, some uh, legalistic behavior. No, he's talking about our wanting to hear from God. God and so that we can get instructions on how we should act so we can please God. That's what he means by delight. And notice now, he didn't put or here. He says this person not only delights in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Notice now, he, again, he's using this word law twice. And so it means it's, it's very important. And this word meditate is another word that we have to hang out with just a little bit here. To meditate on God's word, uh, it is, it's sort of like, well, let me just ask you, how many of you e eat a meal? every now and then. Yeah, and so you chew on it, right? And, and, and you allow it to go into your digestive system so that it can create nutrients that will help your body become strong. Now you have to eat right in order for your body to be healthy. Y'all not listening to me. What you chew on, remember I went back earlier, who's in your head? See, early he talked about the wicked being in your head. But now he's saying that you need to transform your mind. And in order to do that, in order to get that wicked stuff that you piled in there for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, he says it's not going to go away overnight. But there is something you can do to get it out of your head. He's saying now that if you meditate, if you spend time, it actually means murmuring the words over and over again. People say, well, how do you meditate scripture? I say, how do you remember anything? You do it over and over and over again. You cut a new path in your mind. It's just like learning how to get from one destination to the next. Uh, the first time you go, you may not understand all the roads and turn, but you keep traveling on that same road over and over again to the point you get to it, you know it like you know the back of your hand. I don't really know the back of my hand. But you, you heard folks say that, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know the front of it. I don't know if I saw my hand in a hand lineup, if I could say those were my hands. Uh, but what he's talking about here, though, is what's in your mind. He's talking about that if you put what you put in your mind over and over again, if you meditate on it, that it will slowly become a part of you, just like good eating habits. See, you can't eat good one day and expect your body to be healthy automatically. That's how many of us want scripture to work for us. We we want to just say a verse one or two times and sprinkle a little Jesus on it and figure that everything's going to pop into place. Whoa, what he's saying here, that we've got to spend some time with the Lord and we can't just do it a little bit in the morning and a little bit at night. No, he says you meditate on it all day and all night, meaning that it becomes a part of your lifestyle day in and day out, that you meditate on it to the point that it becomes second nature. Meditate, meditate. We all, most of you say, well, I don't know how to meditate. I challenge that. How many of you know how to worry? Come on, raise your hand, raise your hand. Not tap on the glass, tap on the glass. We all know how to worry. Where worry is nothing but a form of meditating. Because when you're worrying about something, you're thinking about it over and over and over and over again. And it's the same thing except for what are you meditating on? You're meditating on what may or may not happen. Uh, he's saying here, take that same energy, that same mindset, that same process and put it on God's word. And, re and start memorizing it and studying it over and over and over till it becomes a part of your spiritual DNA. So what's the second seed of life I want you to have here? Here's what I want you to understand here is that meditation should not be a chore. It can be a delight. It should be delightful. All right. Meditating uh, should not be a chore, but it should. It can be delightful. 
All right, so that's the second uh, thing that I want you to understand here. But walk with me now. Th th this is the verse that I like. Now, this is, this, look, look what he says, that person. I, that's a place where you put your name. That's one of those places in scripture in that third verse where you can put your name. It says that person. Now he says is like a tree. Now is that a metaphor or a simile? I believe that's a simile because a simile means similar to. Uh, yes. So he's saying that he, he's saying here now that that person he didn't say will be. He said that person is like He's giving us a comparison here, like a tree. Uh, notice now, he didn't just say any kind of tree. He describes the type of tree you become like. He says it's like a tree planted uh, by uh, the streams of waters. Uh, 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 let me slow down. I get excited when, when, when I get here because I see my name there. You see, it, it, I, I like reading scripture and making it personal. There are places where you can put your name in, in, in the Bible and uh, your name is all through there. If you become this kind of person, I can go back to verse one and say, blessed is her who does not. You see, if I don't do those things and if her meditates on the word of the Lord and he delights in it, then her will be this type of person and he will be like a tree planted. Now, now there's a lot of uh, theological debate on that word planted there. Uh, it, it does have the meaning of being removed from a dry spot uh, to a more uh, productive spot because in, in the mid, Middle Eastern area, trees have a hard time getting water and, and not every tree has the opportunity to be near water. But if, if a good farmer uh, knows that he needs a tree to produce, he will take that tree from a barren land and come on here and move it over here to a, a land where there's a stream where the water's just going to continue to flow past it and those roots are going to go deeper and deeper and the more water uh, as, as uh, Minister Roundtree taught on last week, the deeper those roots go, you see the more nutrients that come up through the branches and the more that comes up through the branches, the more that goes out through the branches and the more that goes out through the branches, the more fruitful uh, that branch can be and, and the more productive that branch can be. So he's saying here now, he's saying here that those of us who meditate uh, on God's word, who do light in the law of the Lord, he's saying that that person is like a tree that has been transplanted, that has been moved from a barren land, from an unproductive place. Uh, even if you think you've got American happiness, you still don't have the true happiness. He's saying that you need to be uprooted uh, from having that kind of Western mindset and move over here to having a Christ mindset set that your roots will go deep down now and that when you have your roots planted deeply guess what you can be able to withstand the storms of life because see as life comes in and life comes to you the deeper your roots go the better your stability in the tree and so he's saying here now that we need to transplant our mind uh, from, from what we have been thinking on and we need to get another life source. Uh, we can't live without water. He's talking about the streams now. He, he's not talking about one. He noticed there's an S on it. It means multiple. Some even believe that this is an irrigated farm uh, that this farmer has moved this tree to or brought the water to it. Either way, there is a constant flow of water coming into this tree. And when it does, it will yield its fruit. Notice now, not out of season, but in season. What is he talking about here? Regardless of what season you're in, you're going to need some resources. And if you're connected to the source, then you're going to have what you need, when you need it, how you need it, every time you need it. You see, our God isn't trapped by this economy. Our God isn't trapped uh, by COVID. Our God isn't trapped by this presidential election. Our God isn't trapped. He can supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. All. Oh. Notice now, he could have stopped with yields its fruit in season. That would, that's enough to get excited. But then he used another big word. He says, and. 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 That means in addition to you having your fruit in due season. Notice now whose leaves 
do not wither. What is he saying here? He's saying no matter how rough things get, no matter how bad things get, no matter how bad the storms of life may be, no matter how hot it may get, that you're going to have enough resources that it is even going to extend all the way out to the leaves themselves at the very end of the branch, no matter. He's saying so every leaf between the root from the trunk to the outside of the branch is going to have everything. Ah. Ah. That'll be good news because some of you are floundering now. Some of you are wondering how you're going to make it. Some of you are, uh, are saying, well, what if my job doesn't uh, continue to employ me? What if this happens or what if that happens? Well, if you're connected uh, to the one who has all power in heaven and on earth, he's going to supply all your needs. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Now, 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 this is where I want to just spend a little bit of time. It says, whatever they do prospers. Now, 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 you get those prosperity gospel people who will run with this and, and take this out of proportion and out of context here. Prosper in here doesn't mean financially. Uh, oftentimes we think that the only way we can judge our being prosperous is if, if we have a lot of money. There are a lot of people with a lot of money who are in bad shape. That's right. That's right. In fact, money can buy you a bed, but it can't buy you a good night's sleep. Money can buy you a house, but it can't buy you a home. Money can buy you friends, but it can't buy you love. You see, but oftentimes uh, we are looked at based on our money, how well we're doing financially. This whatever they do prosperous means whatever they're doing according to God's word and according to God's will and according to God's way, it will thrive. Meaning that if you're in God's will and if you're living according to God's word, and then it becomes incumbent upon God to see you through. Because God's name is on the line. You see, and so what is he saying here? He's saying here, now just like Jesus says, I believe it's over in the seventh chapter of Matthew, he's talking about how two people live here now. He's talking about what you build your house on. He's saying that there's those who build their house on sand and those who build their house on a solid foundation. On the Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. He's talking about what kind of foundation you gonna have. What are you rooted in? So let me give you your, your last uh, uh, seed of life and then I'll give you some benefits of being rooted here. Here's the last thing I want you to know. The deeper your roots, the better your fruit. Y'all ought to catch that one. The, 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 so what am I saying? The deeper you go into God's word and, and the, 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 the better life is going to be for you. You're going to be blessable. I don't know if that's a word either. And you're going to have some happinesses. How many of you can handle some happinesses? But you first have to be blessable <laughs> to get some happinesses. And that happens by how deep your root is. So the deeper your root, the better your fruit. Amen. Amen. And amen. So let me leave with you. Uh, let me give you some benefits of being rooted. Um, that's our whole theme for our being here 138 years. Uh, first has been rooted. First we learn in a sovereign God. Uh, because we're rooted in a sovereign God, then last week we learned that we needed to be rooted in a savior. And now that we've been rooted in a sovereign God, we can only uh, continue to be rooted that way by being rooted in a savior. And we can only be rooted in a savior by being rooted in the scriptures. And so we're rooted in the scriptures. And so when we're rooted in the scriptures, uh, we can continue. Uh, we thank God for the last 138, uh, but we want to be here till Christ comes. And so if, if, if that allows us to be here next year, then we want to be rooted for the next year so we could be rooted for 139, 140, 150, 160 till Jesus comes. So here's the first one. 
Here's the first one that I want to give you. When you're rooted, you have inward and you have an inward and outward state of joy and satisfaction. Listen to this, regardless of your circumstances. Oh, that ought to be good news. Inward and outward state of joy and satisfaction, regardless of your circumstances. The second one that I want you to know. You are, when you are rooted, you are rooted in right conduct, not wrong. All right, so a lot of times, and I'm going to push the envelope, I get a lot of my younger believers, uh, they tell me how much they love the Lord, but their lifestyle isn't congruent with the scriptures. And then they're wondering how things are going well, but they always have this little hiccup. You know, um, I don't know how many of you know anything about cars, uh, but your car can be running fine, but it's just skipping a little bit. And if your spark plugs, are there, y'all know cars still have those, aren't, aren't firing all right, you just gonna have a little skip every now and then. Little hiccup, little hiccup. Misfire. Misfire. Yeah, misfiring. And that's because you're misfiring in your spiritual walk. You, you, you can't be knowingly, let me just say it that way, you can't be knowingly living outside of God's will and be considered blessable. We don't like that kind of talk, but it's real. The third one I wanna share with you. When you are rooted, notice now, this is one that, and I'll be talking about this more on next week. You have strength and stability in the storms of life. Notice now, being blessable doesn't exempt us from the storms of life. But being blessable gives us stability and strength in the storms of life. So when life comes, uh, unexpected deaths, unexpected layoff, unexpected illness, unexpected unexpected, it's going to happen. It's going to come. Life is going to come at us. As believers, we are not exempt from life. But we have a source that can strengthen us and give us stability in the storms of life. And then lastly, you have a constant. Now, this is the part that you need to understand. You have a constant and timely flow of all necessary resources. Constant, timely. So you can get something constantly, but it can come at the wrong time. That's when it says you will bear fruit in its season. There's certain seasons of life you need certain things. But every season of life you need something. So you need to have a constant flow and timely flow of resources. You get that when you root it. So what's my bottom line here? Here's what I want you to know. There are only two ways to live. That's the way of the world or the way of the word. If you want to be blessable and you want to have happinesses, then I encourage you to become rooted in the word of God. Amen? Amen and amen. I want you to stand by as uh, Brother Jeff comes and makes you an offering, especially for those who are new believers. I've got a book that's going to be yours completely free. If you just listen to him, uh, he's going to make an offer for those who, who don't know the Lord, how they can know him. God bless you and have a good week, and I'll see you next week.